morning and welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, our 11 o'clock worshiping experience where we're doing our best to make disciples by reaching out, loving, caring, sharing, and inspiring spiritual and personal growth. It is so good to have all of you, to see all of you with us on today. And before I get too far gone, a very, very happy welcome back to Diane McGowan. It's good to see you, Diane. Welcome home. It's good to have you with us on today. I do have some announcements to make, my friends, but before um, I do that, please remember, for those of you who are our guests and those of you who are members who may have some things that you're working through right now, fill out a communication card, put it in the offering plate as it comes by during this worshiping experience. This is a great way for us to be in contact with you and for you to stay in contact with us to help with any needs that you might have. And for those of you worshiping with us online, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us on today. And if you're with us on Facebook, please put something in the comment section to let us know that you're here with us in this worshiping experience. As always, read your e-blast, check the newsletter, uh, check the church calendar, follow us on social media. These are ways to stay in touch and to know all the things that are happening here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Today, my friends, is Reformation Sunday. Reformation Sunday. This is a very important aspect in the life of the church where we recognize 500, uh, 505, I believe, years ago when uh, Martin Luther went to the uh, cathedral in Wittenberg, Germany and nailed his 95 theses on that door, speaking against all of the practices that the church was involved in that he believed were wrong, were not biblically sounded, including, of course, indulgences. So we are a part of this Protestant Reformation, and this is also our day. So we're grateful and thankful for this. Truck or Treat on yesterday was a major and huge success. Thanks to all of you who were here to help with this uh, great opportunity. I think we counted around 80-something folks who came through on yesterday. Uh, most of us went home with no candy. Most of us did. The Rice family was not that fortunate, but nevertheless, <laughs> we are very, very grateful. Thanks to Shelly and to our CDC and all of you who helped with yesterday. We really do appreciate you. Um, the Luke Bible study continues this week, Wednesday, 12 o'clock, as well as 6 o'clock. 12 o'clock is in person only. 6 o'clock will be hybrid, where you'll be able to join us via Zoom for that Bible study. I believe we're on lesson three now. So we hope to see you on Wednesday. I do need to meet with session members today. Now, this is not a session meeting. But after this worshiping experience, if you are a member of the session, I need to meet with you for about five minutes, and we'll, we'll meet over here where Todd and Ron are. So Todd and Ron, don't move after worship. Y'all stay right there. The rest of us will come over there, uh, and I have some things that I need to share with you before we get together on tomorrow evening, which is our session time. So please, my friends, keep the session in your prayers. Um, we will, well, actually, we are now in what we, will, what we call our season of gratitude and commitment. And we will be sending out uh, commitment cards to all of you within the next few weeks asking for your help and your support as far as this church is being able to do great things moving into the future. So check your mailboxes. These will not be emailed. They will be snail mailed so check your mailboxes we'll be sending those out within the next couple of weeks do not forget early voting is still taking place um, for those of you who have not gone please make sure that you do if you don't want to wait until november 5th also do this though make sure if you're going to go and vote check your ballot after you've done your voting they will give you your ballot back, look at the names, and make sure that what is on there is what you actually want to happen before you submit it. So make sure that you do that. As a church, we do not endorse candidates, amen? amen. 
unless the devil is running. If the devil's running, I'm going to tell you not to vote for the devil, okay? But I don't see the devil running in these elections, all right? So we do not endorse candidates. However, we do encourage all persons able to vote to do so. It is not just a privilege, it is your responsibility. So make sure that you vote. Um, also, do not forget, today is going to be the last Sunday that we'll be collecting an offering for the uh, Presbyterian uh, Disaster Assistance, who is helping with the hurricane victims, uh, Helene, as well as, uh, was it Melvin? Milton, okay. With those hurricanes, so please, my friends, make sure that you help in that regard if you've not done so already. If you have, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. So during worship on next Sunday, we will take some time to recognize members of this church who have joined the church triumphant, those who have died within the past year from last year's All Saints Sunday. And then an opportunity will be given during this, that period of worship for you to say any names that you would like to of persons who have died within whatever time period and frame that you so choose to desire, but that, uh, choose to say. But that is going to be on next Sunday. Okay, I think, I think, yep, I think I'm good. Birthdays, birthdays, birthdays for this week. Uh, happy birthday to Melissa Feldman. Melissa is the alto section leader uh, that's here on first and third Sundays. Her birthday was actually last week, but we forgot to mention it last Sunday, so we're mentioning it today. Happy birthday to Isabella Sufstead. Happy birthday to Mario Baroni. Happy birthday to Ime Ikong. Happy birthday to Sharon Pinnell. And happy birthday to Tammy Mackesy. You got a birthday this week, Tammy? Happy birthday to Tammy. Happy birthday to all who are having birthdays this week. And of course, if we've missed you, make sure that you let us know and we'll share your birthday on next week. I also want to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but happy anniversary to Bert and Nancy Hager. Am I right, Nancy? Is it 50? 48, okay. Okay, I'm two years early, but happy anniversary <laughs> to Bert and Nancy. And also congratulations to Lucho Romero. He and his fiance, uh, Chris Potts, are gonna be married this coming Friday outside of Seattle, Washington. So those of us who are going to be at that wedding are going to be wearing a whole lot of clothing uh, for, <laughs> for that wedding. But please keep uh, Lucho and Chris in your prayers. All right, my friends, will you stand, please, as we worship God? Time to worship God. Now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship God, just as you are. the 
Let's pray, my friends. Lord, we thank you today for your blessing, your grace, your mercy, this great opportunity that we have to be in your house on today. Now, Lord, we want you to be pleased with what we're doing, with the worship that we give. So right now, use us according to your will and your way. And we trust that you will be pleased with what we give you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My friends, the peace of Christ be with you. Now take a little time and share the peace of Christ with those close to you. And I'd like to invite the children forward. Welcome. <laughs> All right. If you can get down there, you can sit there. <laughs> In Sunday school, we've been learning about Abraham and Sarah. And their story is in the book of? Genesis. Genesis. And where, and where is it? The first chapter. All right. The first book in the Bible. Well, God told Abraham that he would have many descendants, children, grandchildren, on and on and on, as many as there are stars in the dark sky, which are kind of hard to see in Dallas, but if you ever get in the country, you can see there's a lot of stars. And in their old age, they had a son named, and named him Isaac. When he was grown, Abraham wanted to find a wife for him. And he sent his beloved servant to find a woman who worshipped God. And he found... Who did he find, do you know? Rebecca. That's right. And how did the servant know that she was the right one? Because she was beautiful? 
Because she was funny? No. Smart? A good cook? No. <laughs> no. What was she? Everybody say it. She was kind. She was kind. And what did she do to let the servant know that she was kind? She helped people and she praised God. She did praise God. Do you remember what she did? She gave um, the servant some water. And not only did she give the servant water, she gave all of his... No? Camels. And she had to fill up her jar a lot of times to do that. Well, kindness is important, and it's all through the Bible. There's all kinds of many, many, many people who have shown kindness. But I think of Jesus as the best example. He showed his love and gentle kindness to everyone he met. And Jesus says for us to follow him. And to follow him means to do what he did. So what are some ways to show kindness? Up, up. Up. All right. <laughs> you can give. Give lots of things. Money or just words or share your things. Food. Food. Give somebody some food. What can you do that's kind? What do you do a lot? You give them to me all the time. I give hugs. Yeah. I help my teacher. You help your teacher. All right. So we started making a poster, and we put a lot of hearts in our hands, and it's now out in the narthex. So if you would like to participate, I'll give you some paper, and you can add some things. And now... I'm going to share a video and a song that we watched in Sunday school, and please feel free to sing along. It will make you feel happy. Kindness, kindness, oh, whenever you find this, you will see the world's a better place. Kindness, kindness, oh, whenever you try this, you could bring smile to someone's face well it doesn't take much and it doesn't take long no it doesn't cost a thing no and there's no way to do it wrong you can try it anytime you can plant it where you want and you can grow it in your heart then give it out to everyone never in Oh 
That has to make you feel happy, right? All right, let's pray. You be my echo. God, thank you for giving us kind hearts. God, thank you for giving us kind hearts. Thank you for all the kindness and encouragement we get from others. Make us more like Jesus every day. And now you get to help others who need our help with food or rent or whatever by collecting the spare change. I don't think it's on. Oh, now it is. Okay. Thanks for your help, guys. We really appreciate it. Okay, uh, today uh, for our first scripture reading, we're going to be in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. Now there, were, now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men in all their weakness, but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. Amen.
Thank you, Nate. And thank you, Joe, and to all of our young friends for helping with our spare change offering. There are many people being helped in this area because of what you give. And for this, we say thank you. Never believe or think that it goes unnoticed. We are deeply appreciative of everything that you do here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Our second text for today comes from Joe's favorite book in the Bible, as we learned on last week, the book of Job, the book of Job, chapter 42, and we'll read the first six verses, and then we'll drop down and read verses 10 through 17, Job beginning with the 42nd chapter, verse 1. But before we read, that is right, Rob, Bible check, Bible check, Bible check. We encourage you to bring your Bibles when you come to the house of the Lord. All right. Job 42. Please listen and read along. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You ask, who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Then verse 10 through 17. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought upon him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemiah, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuk. Nowhere in all the land where there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation, and so he died old and full of years. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, everything that you've done. So right now, prepare us to hear from you. Make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more. And then open our hearts and stop our ears and clear our minds so we can hear from you and be better than the way we were before. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you would please turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. Friend, today's sermon is called God Did That. Amen. God did that. Let me begin by saying that some of you are not going to like this sermon. I don't have to guess about it. I know. Some of you are not going to like this sermon, and I understand why I do. You see, if your view of God is that of only giving blessings according to your understanding of benevolence, you're going to struggle today. What we will discuss is Israel's initial belief about God that in many ways would fuel their theology of the terrible 
and dreadful day of the Lord where they would ask who will be able to stand. You see, my friends, it's believed that Job is the earliest biblical book written long before the Pentateuch. Job was written and circulated. And if this is true, then what does this first book tell us of what the Hebrews believed about God, about Satan, and about relationships within as well as without? What does this mean? What do they believe? They believe that Satan has access to God. For the book of Job begins sharing the story of during an angelic parade in heaven, Satan shows up unannounced. Now, for those of you who are trying to put in your mind, wrap your mind around this particular concept, let me put it to you this way. Think of the person you like the least. The person you like the least is in your kitchen when you wake up making pancakes. Didn't tell you they were coming over. Somehow or another, they got a key. And they got in making pancakes in your kitchen. Satan's purpose, his job, is defined here in the book of Job. For God asks, where have you come from? Which also could be better translated as, have you been doing your job? Have you been fulfilling your purpose? To which Satan responds, roaming through the earth, going back and forth in it. In other words, he's causing problems all over the world. This is what he's doing. And then God recommends someone. Hello, somebody. Have you considered my servant Job? Job, it's not Satan's idea to trouble Job. It's God's. It's God's idea. So the reality of the matter is they talk about this hedge that's around Job. It's not that Satan hasn't considered Job. He just can't get to Job. There's a hedge around Job that keeps him protected. This hedge motif is used many places biblically. Not only does it represent protection and safety on a personal level, it is also seen for Israel on a national level as well. And we studied this when we studied the book of Daniel. So God removes the hedge from Job with one condition. Without being able to touch Job, Satan then leaves, planning to do his worst. And he does. And then he comes back and says, Job won't break. And then God says, do whatever you want to do to his body. But don't kill him. Okay. Okay. From this conversation, what have we learned about us? What's safe to say about us? For those of us who are truly faithful to the Lord, sometimes the enemy is given access to us. Have you considered my servant Tamala? Have you considered my servant Consuela? Have you considered considered? my servant Abdul. Have you considered my servant Smitty? You know, the first time I realized this, I didn't know whether I should be flattered or disturbed. Is it a good thing that the Lord thinks so much of me that I can handle whatever the enemy gives to me? Or should it frighten me? That the Lord would allow horrible things to happen to me. 
Either way, everything that is done to us has to be green-lighted by the Lord. And it does get bad for Job. Oh, it gets bad. Loses his wealth, his children are killed. His wife emotionally and spiritually abandons him, abandons him. His health is attacked and he lives in pain and anguish. His friends accuse him of sinful living and that's why you're suffering, Job. And then Job doesn't sin, but does decide to question God's sovereignty. Mm-hmm. Told you you wouldn't like it. You see, the issue for Job is what he knows or what he thinks he knows versus what God knows and who God is. See, Job knows that he doesn't deserve the trouble that he's living through. His friends, they disagree. They believe that Job has sinned somewhere and you need to apologize, Job, to get things right with God. That's what they tell him. But Job knows that he's done nothing wrong. He knows he's an upright and righteous man who fears the Lord and shuns evil as Job 1 and 1 states. Therefore, he believes he is due an explanation for his suffering. An explanation not from Satan, but from God. Listen to these verses out of chapter 23. Beginning at verse 2. Even today my complaint is bitter, so Job says. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him. If only I could go to his dwelling, I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he had to, would have to say. Would he oppose me with great power? No, he would not press charges against me. There an upright man could present his case before him, and I would be delivered forever from my judge. But if I go to the east, he's not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When is he at work in the north? I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. He says in chapter 30, verses 20 through 22, I cried out to you, O God, but you did not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly. With the might of your hand, you attack me. You snatch me up and drive me before the wind. You toss me about in the storm. The 35th verse of the 31st chapter, he says, Oh, that I had someone to hear me. I sign now my defense. The defense rests is what he's saying. Let the Almighty answer me. Let my accuser put his indictment in writing. In other words, all of that Job is saying, You have hurt me, and I don't deserve it. And I want to know why. So explain yourself, oh God. And then God responds. Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man and I will question you and you will answer me. Where were you when the earth's foundations were laid? You see, my friends, we've been conditioned to believe that difficulties are always a result of wrongdoing. 
That's what we've been conditioned to believe. Ah, you got laid off. Well, you must have done something. People don't just get laid off. You must have done something. Something must have happened. We have been conditioned to believe this. But, but I want you to take a moment and listen to these possibilities. Listen to these possibilities. You get sick just so a specific doctor has to treat you, which keeps her from losing faith in her calling and practice. You get arrested in order to help a public defendant finally win a court case. You have a car accident, which in the end exposes the corrupt practices of a particular insurance company. Your rent check gets lost in the mail, which gives your landlord the opportunity to be merciful, which he has been asking God for an opportunity to show mercy to someone. You see, sometimes the difficulties we experience in life truly are beyond us. They happen to us so that someone else can be blessed. Someone else can have an experience with the Almighty and it's all God's business. Mm -hmm. It's all God's business. Now, now listen to me. The Lord's promises to us are never negated. Our needs will be met according to God's riches and glory. Our sins will be forgiven if we sincerely ask. We will never be left alone or forsaken. Our promises are not negated, which also includes that in this world, we will have trouble. Now, I recognize that um, this can be twisted incorrectly, so let me try to ex explain. I don't want anybody leaving here believing that the consequences of your wrongdoing is a Job moment. I don't want anybody leaving here thinking that, 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 that God is doing this to you. you. You cussed your boss out on your job and you got fired. I don't want you thinking that this is God sending. No, 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 that's not what this is. You messed up. You messed up your earning opportunity. You should have kept your mouth shut, and you've been better off in that regard. So that's your fault. You cheated on your husband, and now your husband has filed for divorce, and now you got to pay alimony. This ain't no Job moment for you. Mm -mm. That's not what this is. This is your fault. You messed up. You did this to you. Not God. You see, Job learns who God is and all that God can do and all that God will allow. Our text, the 42nd chapter, the second verse begins, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. It's better understood as Job saying, you know that you can do all things. You see, a little while ago, Job was talking and boasting about what he knew. Now he knows he knows very little. So he acknowledges that God knows much more than I do. The sixth verse of our text today shows that Job now understands and recants his rants and raves. He now fully submits that God's knowledge is supposed Superior, even if God chooses not to explain anything at all. The best word to describe how the Hebrews first shared their understanding of God with the world is sovereign. Sovereign. God is God. And God answers to no one. Sovereign. 
The big question is, can we accept God's sovereignty, especially when it appears to not work in our favor? One of my mentors and beloved friend and family friend of ours, the late Reverend Roosevelt Ball, had an interesting way of dealing with disappointments in life. He would pray for things and not get them. And then he would go back to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord. You know I didn't need it anyway. Can we accept God's sovereignty even when it appears that it's not working in our favor. It's because of this reason, if I could, <laughs> I would take out the last verses of this book. <laughs> I would. Because many of us take a look at the last verses of this book, you know, when Job gets everything back. All this stuff comes back. We take a look at the last verses of this book and we use that as a thumbs up. I don't mind suffering, Lord, as long as I get bigger and better at the end. Hurting me, hurting me, hurting me all the time. As long as it's a bigger Buick at the end for me. Bigger house than my neighbors. More money, more wealth. I'm okay. And that's the wrong lesson to get from the book of Job. That's not the point of this book. And even if you wanted to declare that is what you want to believe, let me ask you this. Is that really true? Because Job was upright and righteous all the way through. Are you? Am I? Did you sin this morning? Anybody, I don't have to go through your life. Did you sin this morning? At the breakfast table, you full and you ate another muffin. Did you sin this morning? I'm really like Job. Probably not. You see, the point of Job is not bigger and better. The point of Job is being faithful. The point of Job is being accepting of who God is. Period. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I know you don't like it. Okay. You'll be all right. In Jesus' name, be blessed with this word on today. Amen. My friends, it's now time for us to give. And here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, we have two ways that we recognize within a corporate worship setting of giving. The first is to give our tithes and our offerings. And we give our tithes and offerings because the Lord has said we ought to give our tithes and offerings. Not because I stand in front of you or because someone sitting next to you is nudging you. It's an act of Christian discipline, loyalty, and obedience. But the second act of giving is greater than the first, and that's to give yourself, to give you. If you've come today without Jesus Christ being in control of your life, this is the great invitation for you to make the best decision that you can in this existence. And that is to have the Lord be in charge of your life. Maybe there's someone today who would like to be a member of this church. We'd be more than happy to have you as a member here of the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Maybe you are a member here, maybe you're a member someplace else, but you've gotten off track. You're not living your life for the Lord like you know that you should. Well, this invitation is for you to simply start over again, and it's okay. 
Many of us in this room have done it. Many of us online have done it. I've done it time and time again, starting over with the Lord. It's a sign of how gracious our God is. Or maybe special prayer is what you need. Okay. Maybe you need a prayer to help you with the difficulty that you're involved in right now. And you don't understand it. And God hadn't said anything. This invitation is for you as well. So in just a few moments, my friends, as the praise team blesses us in song, as the offering is being collected, if any of these have touched you, I invite you to join me and, and, and uh, Paul Cundy, our service elder for this month, over here to the side. But if coming down today is a little bit much for you, and this goes for those of you who are joining us online, I'll invite you to reach out to me this week and let's talk. Let's find out where you are in your walk with Christ, for be it that day or today. We always want to make sure that it is the day that we get things right between you and the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Amen. I love that song. Um, we don't do this often enough, though. Um, Y'all, we are blessed with an amazing praise team. They work hard. Um, they never say no. And they're always ready, as the old statement is. Um, uh, they stay ready so they don't have to get ready. So I think it would be a good idea to give the Lord a hand praise for, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're blessed to have you. We are, we are. My friends, it's time for us to go to the Lord in prayer, and I have a few things that I want to, to share with you. Of course, let's continue to pray for our church, the work that we're doing here, what the Lord is doing with us here, um, how the Lord is using us to bless others, and then how the Lord is seeking to bless us. We need to be thankful for this and ask for the Lord's continued guidance as we continue to do, hopefully, everything pleasing in the Lord's sight. Uh, this is, we, we've talked about this being Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We've talked about being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is also Down Syndrome Awareness Month. And uh, my wife and I, at one point, with uh, another church, were involved in a ministry uh, for special needs families. And that ministry was called in God's image, in God's image. And I think sometimes we get this twisted. Um, we all have been made in the image of God. Hello, somebody. I got time. I got energy. I can give you another sermon if you want it. <laughs> we all, Cowboys don't play till tonight, John. We all <laughs> have been created in the image of God. And if we understood that, we'd see the value in everyone. We'd understand that everyone contributes. So we want to keep our brothers and sisters and sibling, siblings who are living with Down syndrome in our prayers and their families as well. And then lastly, those who are dealing specifically with bone cancer, bone cancer. It's a very, all cancers are hard. All of them are hard. Bone cancer is in especially agonizing if you've ever seen anyone living with this. So please, let's keep our friends who are living with bone cancer in our prayers. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, we thank you today for all that you have done. Even those things that we don't understand that you have chosen for whatever the reason may be to not explain, to not share, to not share with us. We still say thank you. For you've told us in your word that we ought to give thanks in all things. And honestly, Lord, sometimes that is a struggle. But at our core, we trust you. We trust you. Everyone else has failed at some point or another. We trust you. With our well-being, the well-being of those whom we know and love, we trust you. So right now we ask that you would bless this church our session who will be meeting tomorrow night. Every ministry, every person, show us the way that you want us to go. 
for we desperately want to follow you. Like Job, sometimes we think we know. But we have learned that only you do. So lead us and guide us. We ask blessing, your blessings today. Upon all of your children with special needs and their families, dear Lord. Help us to celebrate the gifts that you've given to each of us. Help us to see you in all of us. Help us to understand that we've all been created in your image. And everything that you've made, you looked at it and you called it good. And today, Lord, we ask your blessings upon your children who are living with bone cancer. Oh, yes, Lord, we pray. We ask that you would heal as only you can and be with their families and friends who are walking this journey with them. Be with this country, but not only the United States of America, every nation in this world you have created and bless all of our political leaders, dear Lord, touching their hearts, their minds, so that they will seek you before making decisions that affect us all before making decisions that we must live with. Now hear our prayers and grant our requests as we close by saying the prayer that you taught us. And we say that prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. My friends, will you stand, please, as we prepare to leave this place? And members of the session, remember, I need to see you for five minutes or less over here by Todd and Ron. Please make sure that I see you for just a few moments after this worshiping experience. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us on today. Thank you so much for joining us online. Thank mm -hmm. you.